Okay, I'm Conrad Taylor. Mine's the shortest presentation today. I think I've, I've timed myself for doing it under 10 minutes. Um, and uh, uh, what I'm basically looking at, issues of quality in digital imagery use, particularly where uh, print is concerned. I've got uh, a paper that I've, I wrote over the last sort of week, which um, we're going to try to get some form of distribution from later, and that goes into a lot more detail than I'm going to go to here. Here I'm basically looking at one case study um, where good results were obtained uh, in reproducing wood engraving art uh, for print. And a, a second one is a look at the million images on Flickr to see if that would be so easy to exploit. Um, this, by the way, Mahendra is kind of quite bemused by this little object. It's my linen tester, which has been with me for about 35 years and is used for inspecting print. Um, and, you know, you can also get some respect for printers when you pull one of these out of your pocket. They start paying serious attention to you. Um, now, um, okay, so is it this, this way? Yeah, okay. So I've been involved with the graphic arts for quite some time. Uh, this is the largest camera I've ever owned. Uh, and uh, you use cameras like this. We used to use cameras like this before scanners and stuff came along. Uh, I love those machines. I've also been an illustrator and cartoonist, and when I'm doing those sorts of, that sort of work, I am trying to achieve extremely high contrast line work that is very easy to reproduce in print, or was in the analog world. This is important because most of the images that we're thinking about in terms of the million images are before 1870. Around 1880, William Fox Talbot, the photographer, invented half-toning, which is a, a way of taking continuous tone imagery and turning it into spots which these days are too small for the naked eye to observe. A lot of people don't know these spots exist. That's why the linen test is there for. Um, but because we're talking about 1870 and before, there are no continuous tone images printed in books. We're talking about wood blocks, wood engravings, etc. Now, the case study that I'm going to talk through here is this book, which um, uh, Anita Jen Jenny McKenzie asked me to be the kind of technical person for. I mean, Anita and I used to do quite a lot of work together where she had the kind of concept and I was the secret science officer. I've got my <laughs> Star Trek uh, badge here. Um, nowadays, the collection um, of, uh, of pictures that was accumulated, which included quite a lot of 18th and 19th century images uh, is under the curatorial control of Nasiche Mackenzie, her daughter, Wave, who you can talk to afterwards. She's at the back. Uh, I've got, we've got one remaining copy of the book and we've got the linen tester if anyone wants to squint at it. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm taking as an example this image. I know we're in a library and you might wonder if he's a librarian. No, he's a Liberian. Uh, and this was... Uh, President Stephen Allen Benson, when he came over in 1863 to attend the Great Exhibition, uh, the Illustrated London News commemorated that by making um, a, a, this little wood engraving of him. And uh, to give you some of the stats, we, unfortunately, we trusted, we trusted CD-ROMs to save our images, and they're all corrupt. Um, and so what I've done is I've re-scanned on a... Under 100 quid desktop scanner at 2,400 pixels per inch grayscale, right? And I could have gone a further. Um, so we've got here 4,994 pixels wide, 6,529 pixels high. I'm often hearing, slight aside, go into a bit of a tirade on it in this paper. I'm often hearing people say, it's got to be 300 DPI, 72 DPI is not an... The question is, it doesn't matter what, it should be pixels per inch, by the way, not dots per inch. It doesn't matter what that resolution, that normal resolution is. The question is, have you got enough pixels? Because you can always make them smaller. Um, so, but when you look at the, wood, already, the original wood engraved lines, they came out at about 15 pixels wide with this scan. Uh, before we get into that, I just want you to admire the skill of these largely anonymous craftsmen who are taking the original drawing and reproducing it by taking a, a plank of, a bo of boxwood. You saw some wood cuts earlier from the ballads. Wood engraving is an enhanced technique developed by 
uh, a Geordie, uh, Thomas Bowick, um, and you could get very high uh, quality tonal reproduction. Um, and of course, the book is about the representation of people of African Asian heritage, and being able to accurately represent the skin tone using these technologies was very important. But also, you get these curving lines, which give you a sense of the shape and the texture as well as the tone. <coughs> and I, I think it's fantastic. I've had a go at wood engraving myself. It's hard work. So uh, what if you have an analog mark on a piece of paper and you scan it? Well, the results that you get will depend upon the fineness of the pixel grid that you lay over it. Okay? So if you've got something more to the 300 ppi uh, side, there's a lot more that you can do with it. And we did. So what do you do? You go into Photoshop. I've been working in Photoshop for something like 20 years. Um, you can increase the contrast. That helps to resolve those grey pixels into more of a black and white situation. In fact, we then upped, sampled, and went to a pure bitmap, pure black and white, using a diffusion dither algorithm, which will get smoothed out when once you know once the ink hits the press, hits the paper, the blanket cylinder hits the paper, and that's how we got these good results. Let's take a look at the paper <coughs> stream. I went hunting. I found an iguana, very amiable Jamaican iguana, and I wanted to grab it. So I grabbed it, and the, uh, this was called the original. I don't know whether it really was the original. I haven't yet determined what the resolution of the planetary scanner really is. But what's on offer is 1,400 by 224 uh, for the whole page. And this is what it looks like in Photoshop. Ladies and gentlemen, what am I going to do with that for print? I submit it's very difficult. I'll tell you something else as well. The image is the image was from a black and white book, right? So why do we have an RGB image? Why was it saved in JPEG, which is a, such a destructive algorithm for line images? Yeah? Should have been saved in something else. TIFF would be fine because you can get LZW compression in there. Anyway, I admire a challenge. I, I like a challenge, so here's my best go. And of course, for screen, for Christmas cards, if you like iguanas on your Christmas cards, it's perfectly fine. But I'm, I must admit that if people want to start using these images to represent, let's say, historical books, um, <coughs> they're going to have a bit of a job on their hands, and that is the end of my tale. I have one quick question. You're working with the images straight from the flicker, is it? In that latter case. Right. In the former case, I scanned it. Right. Um, it's because I believe the process of uploading to flicker creates that. Uh, okay, so it's a, it's a flicker matter. Mm, I don't think so. No? Well, that's why it's called the original. If you upload a PNG, it's a yeah. PNG. If you like upload a, a JPEG. Like it doesn't take JPEG 2000. Right? Oh, so in that case, it makes a conversion. So you, you, you send it up as JPEG 2000 and basically you're flickered. No, no, you can't. It just rejects it. So it has to be something flicker accepts. Okay. But the originals are JPEG 2000 and it is uh, pixels per inch identical to what's from the JPEG. Okay. So that's the highest resolution we have, unfortunately. Okay. Mm. Thank you. <laughs>